It was God that said it because the scripture said all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen. It was God that said it. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Amen. that whosoever believeth in him yes. should not perish but have everlasting life. You've got to believe the word. We are for the right. Yes. Acts 2, 38, repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Yes. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That means some of you would like to exclude yourselves. Some like to say it's not for me. But Peter didn't say that. He was talking to all concerned. The scripture said the things that were written before time. They were written for our learning. Whatever was said to the church back then applies to the church today. Amen. Because the same spirit that was in the church back then is the same spirit that is in the church today. You can't tell me that we have another spirit and another doctrine and another way. It's the same spirit. It's the same doctrine. It's the same way. That's why Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't come this way unless you come through Jesus Christ. That's why many of you out there that are baptizing in the name of the Father and in the Son and the Holy Ghost, don't you read the scriptures? It said baptizing in the name of the Father. What was the name of the Father? It was Jesus. Because Jesus, when he came, he said, I am come in my Father's name. What was the name of the Son? When Mary was about to give birth, the angel said, that holy thing that shall be born of you, he shall save his people from his sins, he shall be called Jesus. Amen. And when Jesus was about to leave this earth, he said, when I go, the Father will send you the Comforter in my name. Amen. So the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Amen. So when you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, you fulfill Matthew 20 and 19. You have done what Jesus told you to do. Amen. When you go out and baptize in that name, you have led someone astray. When you baptize in the name of the Father, without recognizing the name of the Father is Jesus, when you put a man down in the water and say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Ghost. What is that name? The name is Jesus. Why don't you do what the scripture says do? What did Peter say? Come on. Go down a dry sinner and come up a wet one. Come on. That's what he says. So you're going down a dry sinner, coming up a wet one, but you're still in your sins. Amen. Listen to what the scripture said here. Baptize the name of the Listen, go on, brother. Repent and be baptized. Yes. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. No other name but that name. No other name given under heaven whereby a man can be saved Amen. but that name. That's why Peter specifically said, in the name of Jesus Christ. And what do you achieve, brother? For the remission of sins. Amen. It's going to say, listen, he was that sacrifice. He was that eternal sacrifice. Go back in the Old Testament, when they used to have different sacrifices for different sins. Yet the scripture said those sins could not cleanse the guilty conscience. In other words, a man could be baptized back then. A man could have been sprinkled with the blood of a turtle dog, or some ox, or some cow, or some other creature. And yet, when he was done, if he went and sinned again, he was still under condemnation. And he had no power to live above the world and above sin. But when you come into the New Testament time, you see where the blood of Jesus Christ not only cleanses sin, it cleanses the conscience from sin. Yes. So a man no longer desires sin, nor to live a sinful life. Read on for me, brother. For the remission of sins. For the remission. The word remission comes from the word remit. The word remit means to pay off. When it said remission, it means for the removal. That means when you go down in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are removed. Yeah. When you don't go down in that name, they are not removed. Amen. They remain, and you are still in your sins. Amen. That's why many people are going to hell, and they don't know why, and they don't know how. Amen. But they're going. Amen. Because they have not followed the scripture. Some will tell you, you don't need to follow the scripture to the letter. Because in my words, they are spirit and they are life. 
My words, they are spirit and they are life. You have to follow this word. Amen. As it has been given. Please step forward, brother. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. For the promise is unto you. Now he's saying you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Meaning that, listen, it's sequential. You've got to go through the process of baptism, amen. amen, of repentance, of, amen, of, of, of being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then when you come up out of that water, I didn't touch on that today, but I'll let touch on it briefly now, that when you're baptized, you must be fully immersed in water. Amen. Man might tell you, no, you don't. Listen to what the scriptures say. Know ye that, know you not that you that are baptized into his name, are baptized into his death yes. and his resurrection. Meaning when they put you down in the water, that is almost like you died with Jesus. Amen. Remember when Christ went down in the water, yes. the scripture said he was circumcised from sin. Even today as you and I go down in the water, when we go down, we leave the sins down there. We come up without them. Amen. We come up clean like a newborn baby. If you go down in the name of Jesus Christ, you come up like a newborn baby. Come on, buried with him in baptism. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's emerged. Yes. Why do you think the scripture said, uh, uh, if he then be risen with Christ? Yes. Risen from what? Risen from the dead. Amen. Somebody put you down in the grave, in the water, because the water is a watery grave. And you come up out of the water, you are resurrected. No, listen, if he then be risen with Christ. Yes. Seek those things which are about, yes, where moth and rust does not corrupt, yes, where thieves do not break through and steal. Yes, Finish it for me, brother. Amen. For the promise is unto you. Yes. And to your children. That's everybody. Listen. It said to you and to your children. Yes. That means all of them that were to follow. That yes. means you and I. Yes. That means everybody that comes after. That's right. Promise was unto them and to their children. Listen. Finish that for me. Yes. And to all that are far off. Come on, my brother. To all that are far off. That means they, they haven't even come to the gospel yet. They haven't even come this way yet. They haven't even thought about being saved yet. But yet the scripture made a provision for them that when they came, they might be saved. Come on, brother. It's not his will that any be lost. It's going to say that he takes no pleasure in the death of a sinner. Amen. That man out there that has killed and raped and plundered yes. and destroyed lives. Yes. He, even God takes no pleasure in his destruction. God takes no pleasure Amen. in that man's destruction. He would rather that you came to him. Amen. Let the wicked forsake his way Amen. and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Amen. Let him return unto the Lord, for he will have mercy upon him. And unto God, for he will abundantly pardon. He rather that you come and be saved from your sin and live. Read for me, uh, Mark 16, there for me, my brother. Mark 16, 14. Yes, my brother. After he appeared unto the eleven. Yes. And he sat at me and upbraided them with their unbelief. Remember, he came to the eleven. That was, listen, they were his immediate followers. He upbraided them for what? With their unbelief. With their unbelief. And hardness of heart. And hardness of heart. Because they be not them. Which had seen him after he was risen. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. That means even the church at times needs to be reminded to believe. Read on for me, brother. And he said unto them, Yes. Go ye into all the world. Yes. And preach the gospel. And preach the gospel. To every creature. To every creature. He that believeth. He that believeth. And is baptized. You see, you don't have to believe this. You see, as I was saying to the brother this morning, God didn't call me to save anybody. He didn't call me to save a soul. He called me to save myself. Amen. Listen, that scripture the brother just read, it said, save yourself from this untoward generation. What does untoward mean? It means they're hell bound. Amen. Amen. They're on that, that broad road to destruction. They don't care. The world is on its way to hell, and they don't care. But the scripture calls on you yes. to save yourself. Amen. And maybe them that hear you. But it didn't call you to save anybody else. It's not your job to bring any man to the gospel. That's God's job. That's the job that Jesus Christ has. That's why he said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's God's job. That's, that's Jesus' job. 
Amen. You are called upon to save yourselves. Amen. Those that hear this message, you are called upon to save yourself. That if you die, you don't go to hell. Amen. You got to remember something. You can live in this world with everybody, but every man dies alone. If a hundred people are standing in a room and they all die, each of them died individually. Each of them will pay for their sins individually. Amen. You can't go to hell holding someone else's hand. Say, let's go to hell together. You're going there by yourself. Amen. Amen. When you get there, you're going to be there by yourself. That rich man must have had helpers in his house. That big house he had, where the scripture said he died sumptuously. He lived a great life, had great meals, lived a wonderful life until he died. Then he had nothing left. Amen. Came into this world with nothing. Scripture said, naked came I into the world, and naked go out. I out. Doesn't matter what you accomplish in this world. When you die, you die alone. You pay for your sins alone. And that's why you ought to get right with God before it's too late. Because today could be your last day. You just don't know. We sing that song. This could be your last chance. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Come on. You die without God, you accomplish nothing. You die without God, you've lived in this world. Doesn't matter what you've eaten, where you slept, how much money you've had, how much you've enjoyed this life. When you die without God, you are, you, you are condemned to die in hell. Amen. And the scripture said, there, all that remains is a fearful waiting for the yes, judgment. Lord. Amen. Yes. I want you to go with me to Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 13. Jeremiah 2 and verse 13. Let's talk about amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Jeremiah 2 and verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. Come on now, he wasn't talking about the world. You see, you wonder why God is going to judge the church first. I want you to go to, uh, to go to 1 Peter for me. Hold that scripture. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 17. You think God doesn't know the condition of his own people. You think God didn't put the word together for his own people. You think God doesn't know that the, the church is in a backslidden state. Do you think he doesn't know that? Read for me, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 17. And if you call on the Father, yes. who without respect of person, yes. judges according to every man's work, yes. has the time yes. of your sojourning here in fear. Read on. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things. That's what it says. You are not redeemed with? Corruptible things. That's right, my brother. Amen. Amen. Read on. As silver and gold. Yes. From your vain conversation. Yes. Received by tradition from your father. Come on. But with the precious blood of Christ. That's how you were bought. You think a price wasn't paid for the church? You think that God would buy something and not take care of it? You think God put the church out there for the devil to destroy it? You think that the church is being compromised without the knowledge of God? You're wrong. Amen. You're wrong. If you think that God purchased the church, the church with the blood of shed of his son on the cr cross of Calvary and that he just left it, amen, like a man bought a vineyard and he didn't take care of it. He just left it and let it grow. That's not what God did. He's going to take care of the church. He shed, he shed that blood for everybody. He's going to take care of the church. Amen. Amen. Go back to me, my brother, to uh, uh, Jeremiah 2, verse 13 there. For my people have committed two evils. Yes. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. Who was he talking to? He wasn't talking to the world. Listen to what he said. I want you to read it for me loud and clear. Once again, for... For my people have committed two evils. Look at what God said. 
So you have the light to say there's nothing wrong with the church. You're liars. You don't want the church to know. You don't want people to get right with God. You want them to sit in, in the house of God, clapping and singing, and find them their way in hell. You want them to be in the church and still die. Imagine you come to church every Sunday, twice maybe on Sundays, two times during the week, and you're clapping and singing your way to hell. You still don't know you're not right with God. Because you don't understand the scriptures. You think if you don't come through the door, you're right. You must come through Jesus Christ. That's number one. But listen, you want to understand why the church is in the condition it's in. Because people don't want to get right with God. Now, you read that for me again, my brother. For well, my people. Have my been. people. Not someone else's people. God wasn't talking to the world. He was talking to the church. You listen. When people tell you there's nothing wrong with the church, you gotta measure those statements. Listen to what God said. For the wrath of God is visited from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. That means that a man knows what he ought to do Amen. and he still does not do it. Amen. That means a man knows the truth and still doesn't live it. Do you know what, what the spirit of apostasy is? Do you know we're living in the age of apostasy? Do you know what apostasy is? Apostasy is when a man has the truth and will not live it. We are living in the apostate age. We're living in an age where men know the gospel. They hear the gospel. That they will not live it. They refuse it. And that's why I go back well, way back in Jeremiah's time. Jeremiah was looking down the streams of time. Jeremiah was looking at the church in years to come. He was a prophet of God. He was prophesying about the condition of the church. What was written in the Old Testament is still valid in the New because Jesus Christ said, I come not to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill. Read for me, brother. For my people. My people. Have committed two evils. Have committed two evils. They have forsaken me. Listen, someone won't read your Bibles, won't study the Word of God. The Scripture said, "Search the Scriptures." Amen. It's a commandment from God to search the Word of God. Amen. Did you know that you are required to pick up God's Word and study it? Amen. Did you know you are required to search the Word Amen. of God? Amen. Do you know it's a God-given commandment? Search the scriptures. Amen. For in them you think you have eternal life. Yes. And they are they which testify of me. Yes. Doesn't matter how much you testify. If you're not living right, you're going to die anyway. Amen. You've got to make sure you're living according to the word of God. That's why you have to study. Amen. Study to show yourselves approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing. That means rightly understanding the word of God. Why do you think people are in so much error? They don't even know what's right and what's wrong. They've not studied the word. They've not searched the word. They don't understand the word. And so when they hear a lie, they don't know whether it's a lie or whether it's true. Read off on me, my brother. Come on. Living in vain. Read off on me, brother. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. You remember the story of the woman that came to the well. And when she came, she had her, her bucket to draw. Yes. And Jesus said, give me of your water. And she said, how comest thou, being a, 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 a Jew, ask me a Samaritan for water? You know, she raised the race question. Yes. Amen. She wanted to know why that Jew was asking her a Samaritan for water. He said, listen, if you knew who was asking you, 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 would, you, 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 would, you would give him. And I would give you.